Mauricio Dubon called game tonight. That's right. Mauricio Dubon in his last at bat with two outs and two strikes saves the Astros. They get home on a jet with a winning team to take on the leading AOS Texas Rangers. We're going to talk about this and what happened in this game on tonight's Locked on Astros. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Beer leans back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we're your daily Astros podcast. I'm H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Always Stros, you can find the show at Locked on Astros on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, wherever you get your podcast free and easy to listen to. Become an everyday or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for getting us to 8,000 subscriptions. We appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And tonight, once again, I'm joined by the man, the New York kid, all the way from Buffalo, New York, diehard Astros fan, Trevor Howard. Trevor, welcome to the show. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight. Thanks, Brett. Lo- you know I love being on this show with you, especially after a big win like this where – Pretty much an unsung hero, in my opinion. Came through in the clutch, got us a win. Wasn't pretty, but a win's a win. That's right. A win is a win. And we want you to know that tonight we want to make sure that you make us your first listen every single day. Become an everydayer and hit that subscribe button. If you're watching, please hit the like. We want to know that if you are watching us, that you like what we produce. We like what we put out there. So thank you all so much for doing that, giving us a big thumbs up. And, man, what a way to go into the Rangers series. You know, after the game on Saturday, because we obviously don't do shows on Saturdays for the most part. um, For Saturday, boy, that was a game that you really thought that was winnable. But I don't know that the lineup was set optimally enough for them to win. And so they lose four to one. They lose where the, I mean, they got six hits. Look, the A's produced four runs on six hits. So I don't know what the excuse is there, but you, you did have an interesting lineup. Gray Kessinger. Look, Gray Kessinger's first at bat. He gets it. He gets a hit, you know, yep. um, he, he does go one for four. Um, Dubon came in later pinch hit. He pinch hit, um, Diaz late in the game. I thought he should have done that in the seventh inning. There were a lot of things that I think could have been done differently, but look, Trevor, they weren't. So that's why I want to focus on this game. Look, we win three out of four from Oakland. They only take one of the, what, eight games or seven games that we played them this year. Yep. And so that's good. I believe, are we, are we done with Oakland for the rest of the season or do we still have, do we have, do, do we have like another series against them? If we do, it's definitely at home. We're done in the college. Okay, yeah. Yeah, we're yeah. done in that in that we're done. sewer stadium. Yeah, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Oklahoma. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, but, look, man, dude, a Mauricio Dubon called game. Look, this kid has done everything that has been asked of him. Every time he's there, he just seems to come through. And um, I was I was looking on MLB.com, looking at some post game stories, and they interviewed Dubon after the game. Um, you know, his home run. Let's first say this would have been a home run in thirty out of thirty ballparks. He that is not a unicorn number. That's not a no, unicorn number. no. He crushed that ball. He he wasn't the only one that home run. He wasn't the only one with the home run today, but he was the one with the most important one because it went to put them in the lead 106 miles an hour off the bat 404 feet and when he hit it he looked back at the dugout with some attitude trev he did he did and so before the game man he showed that exactly so that fire's been missing right i mean i mean isn't that something i mean we've talked about it you've seen eric and i talk about it. you and i have talked about on twitter that's has been seen to be a spark that's been missing with this team a spark plug swag other people call it it's something that'll get the boys fired up and, I mean, it. the fact that it comes from a guy who's just trying to fill in the shoes of Jose Altuve while he's out with, what is that, his third separate injury of the year this year, he's been really battling through it in 2023, whether it's his thumb from the World Baseball Classic or the two 
count him up two oblique strains. He's been there and both sides of the ball, Brett, defensively, offensively, he has come through. Mm. What's that? His fifth home run of the year. Yeah. He's got to be close to his career high. And as far as homers <laughs> in a season, he does, he's exactly. not really a guy that's going to take it yard, but you know, we call Mauricio do bonds like Barry Bonds sometimes on Twitter. Oh, and I like that. Mauricio really kind of Bonds like that this year. And I'm going to say like, you know, Kanye West said, here's another hit, Barry Bonds. I'm going to say, here's another hit, Mauricio Dubon. I like it. Trevor will be dropping his album in late August. So Look make sure you check it, that out Please. on SoundCloud. He's a SoundCloud rapper. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll go into Spotify <laughs> a little bit later, but starting off slow on SoundCloud there. Check out his MySpace page, right, Trevor? Check me out on my new X account tomorrow. <laughs> Elon Musk X account, bro, yes, sir. bro, that's right. I'll so this is what's funny. Generation X signs over here, exactly. So Mauricio Debon before the game, um, Alex Bregman was doing a crossword puzzle. It was reported, and he couldn't find. He was racking his brain to find a certain word, <clears throat> so he was getting his teammates to help him out, and Dubon helped him answer it. And Bregman yelled, "He goes, that's a one hit guaranteed for Dubon today." Well, he what came did he through. Do? You know, and um, look, Mauricio Dubon admitted it. He said this. He said, it's been a horrible series, trying to search, trying to get back and going. Um, I asked God for help. Honestly, I was literally like, hey, it's me again. He ended up coming through. And another thing that Mauricio Dubon said was, I missed the sign. Dubon said, I got more focused on trying to make something happen. I tried to stay focused, stay patient with whatever was coming and try to flush it out right away. Look, when you're up bottom of the ninth or top of the ninth, two outs, one ball, two strikes, you're probably not thinking home run. You're thinking, I just got to get on base. Nope. Like tied, if I get on base, I got guys behind me. And he hit the ball like just boom, just out of the park. And I really love to see that. But um, I want to move on to um, Hunter Brown here in a second. So when Altuve comes back, because people are asking about whether Alvarez, I believe Alvarez will be there tomorrow. He had a scheduled rest day today. I do not, I have not heard that he's traveling with the, with the Sugarland Space Cowboys. I do not believe he's going with them. I think they're going to Vegas. And so I doubt he would make that trip. He is here in Houston. So tomorrow he may be in the dugout. I don't know if he'll play tomorrow, but I believe you will see him back this series. But there's nothing that has come out official um, you said, we'll just address real quick. You said that um, Altuve has been taking BP, but they yep. haven't given an official update on him, correct? Yeah, they don't have an update on him as far as I as far as far I know now. Um, within the last hour, I was checking on Altuve stuff, doing some prep for the show. Have, I've been seeing a lot of the same stuff. He's taking BP. He's, he's, in the, he's traveling with the team. He's in the clubhouse in the dugout. Uh, but nothing really as far as a rehab assignment is, is concerned. I remember he went on the 10-day. Uh, was it right before the all-star break? Cause I think it was maybe July 4th where he left BP yeah. early and they subbed him out for that game against the Rockies. Um, but it's a lot of the same stuff. He's doing videos with, uh, with Julia Morales talking about his favorite snow cone flavor. Um, you know, he's there, but as far as yeah. updates on him coming back, haven't heard, I would more, I would probably expect to see Jordan before Jose, but you know, going into this series, you know, you talked about Jordan coming back and before I know I see a lot of people already saying, Oh, he better play tomorrow. You got to remember the Rangers got some injuries too. You know, Seager Garcia, they said something about how Eovaldi isn't playing in this whole series when he was supposed yeah. to start on Tuesday. So before you guys get all upset, just know that it's, it's the, you know, the Rangers are dealing with the same, same stuff too. Yeah. And I think in the, in, in the last segment, we'll address like, is there a preferred place for us to be in the playoffs? One seed or two seed coming out? Well, I say two seed, number one in the West or number two in the West, because both those spots, I think, make it into the playoffs regardless. But before we do anything else, um, we need to talk about our sponsor. Um, one of the coolest fantasy like tools that I've ever used, and that is Sleeper. Let me tell you all about Sleeper. Sleeper is phenomenal. It is one of these things that, look, it's literally easy to download on your device okay you get up to a 100 dollars match on your first deposit 
on your mobile device today. And I'm going to show you here if you're watching. That's why it's important for you to not only if you listen to our show to go to our YouTube channel and watch our show. You see here, I pull up Shohei Otani. There are different things you can go for in the game. Um, will he have seven and a half strikeouts, high or low? Will he get a hit, 0.5? one or more, you know, how many innings will he pitch, things like you, you've got all these different categories. And then what you can do is you can, you take players from both teams, Jose Ramirez versus Shohei Otani, Lane Thomas and Luis Arise and all these guys, and you can combine them. And it is a fast and easy way to play. You want to win 100 times your money in daily fantasy sports? Well, this is it. Sleeper is where you get it done. I've experienced it. I've enjoyed it. I even took advantage of our promo code and they matched my $100 entry in there. Dynamic payouts are live. Um, what are dynamic, dynamic payouts? In short, each player projection now has a multiplier attached to it as opposed to a preset multiplier based on the numbers of legs in a contest. With dynamic payouts, also, with it also comes with more categories and places that your contest and higher payouts for you to receive. So right now, for first-time depositors, you can receive a 100% instant deposit match at $100, up to $100 using the promo code Locked On. That's a promo code Locked On to match up to $100. Swing for the fences with this promo code Locked On at sign up, and you'll get a deposit match up to $100. Go to Sleeper and check it out. Make sure you do that as well. Also, if you would, go to, if you can't watch the game, we want you to listen to the game on Sirius XM. The Rangers play the Astros. They come to Houston to the original Minute Maid Park. Monday, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Catch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM Search Astros. So, look, let's talk about Hunter Brown because we spent the whole first segment on Mauricio Devon, deservedly so. Um, someone in here, I believe it was Jalen, talked about um, how Dubon had really been kind of in a slump. I mean, he even said it in the quote that I put up there, like things haven't been going well for him. Heck, um, talking about slumps, Corey Jolks has, has been – He's been not hitting well, but then this weekend, he had a bunch of bad luck hits. I mean, straight, solid contact. We talked about that the other day when you were on with me. And just yeah. the ball going straight to players. And today, Hunter Brown goes to the mound. You're like, all right, Hunter Brown, it's time for you to step up because you are the guy that we touted as one of the top 10 guys to go after the, the rookie of the year. And it wasn't terrible. He's he's had worse outings, but it wasn't his best. So six innings pitched, six hits, two runs, both of them earned, two walks, four strikeouts, the one home run, the 419 ERA. You want that to go down a little bit. What did you what did you see from Hunter that you were encouraged by? What did you see from Hunter that you that may still give you pause and going, is this rookie just kind of you know fatigued right now? So if we want to do a little good news, bad news here, let's start off with the bad news. Let's kind of ease them into the good news. Bad news, just the hard hit balls. Um, he got through the first two outs in the first inning fairly quickly. I was like, all right, Hunter, we got this. Boom, 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 looking like JV. And then, uh, and then you know, you just see JJ Blade go dead center, 430, 438, I think it was. He smoked that one. Uh, just the hard hit balls are a little bit concerning. Um, and I don't really know why this is a thing, but it's really happening this year. But a lot of people are blaming the catcher calling the pitches rather than the pitchers making mistakes. Um, I think that's this is fully on Hunter Brown. The six hits really isn't pretty against a team like Oakland, even though Oakland still, they're a major league team. They have major league ball players on their team. Starts like this happen. Uh, Colorado, he was getting hit around, but it really wasn't like that to an extent. He only gave up two earned runs. Um, the thing I did like was his composure on the mound when he got, you know, stuck in a tough situation. Um, you know, there was a bases loaded, nobody out in the bottom of the fourth. He's throwing gas. He maxed out at 97.4 in the bottom of the fourth inning on a ground ball to Bregman, which he threw home to Diaz and then threw to first for the double play. Awesome play there. You really don't see those types of double plays a lot. The third baseman to the <laughs> catcher to the first baseman. And right. then the next pitch was a line out right to Bregman. He's going to the dugout, pounding his uh, his fist into his glove. He was fired up. Uh, you know, some uh, there was another negative too. It's that both of those runs, those earned runs, were given up with two outs. You know, mm. they okay. I think they had a leadoff double 
on the second run that they scored, they got the runner out at third on the fielder's choice. Then somehow the runner at first got all the way to third. And then with two outs, or he got the strikeout with one out, two outs come on. And then he gives up a single. I'm like, oh, damn, you know, these two outs are, are, are definitely killers. But at the same point, you look at a guy like Hunter Brown and he has such huge shoes to fill. Everybody's comparing him to, oh, he's got the same exact mechanics. He's going to be the next Justin Verlander. I think we hold off on that for now. That was I've you. Said that. That, was <laughs> that was me. That you was me. What? Yes. Hey, you look, but look, look, you know what? Shoes to fill, but I'm going to let him be Hunter Brown for now. Yeah. I know he's oh, going to get better, but you know, I think just a, a start like this, it's somewhat encouraging for him because, you know, only giving up two runs, he got smacked around like a pinata against the Rockies. His yeah. Last see, that was, so. see, look, look, I'm guilty, but you know what? I'm right there with the pitching ninjas. So I don't, I don't mind my company. <laughs> No, but I mean, look, look at those, look at those mechanics, right. look at his windup. I right. agree with and, you 100% and see, there. Now, now for me, when I say, when I say maybe like, maybe I've even said he's Justin Ver- Verlander 2.0, I, I, I'm not saying that he's going to replicate a Hall of Fame career exactly like, like he did. Now, anybody has a potential to have a Hall of Fame career when they're a rookie, right? I, sure. I guess. I mean, Jeremy because, Page. right. I mean, look, yeah. but at the end of the day, what I love about this kid is when I first met him and I'm not going to keep recounting the same story over and over, but everything, whenever I've talked to Hunter Brown in person, his confidence level, when he was in AAA, I just want to be up there helping the big league club. I just want to be up there. Like he was, he was in the moment. He was there because he, he was, he was crushing it in AAA, but his ultimate goal was to get to the big league club. Like, like he, he was a no doubter. And, and of course, all, all these guys, obviously that, that is their goal. But sometimes guys have that extra like X factor gene in them. And Hunter Brown seems to do that. And I would rather him kind of struggle with two outs against the Oakland A's and give up maybe a run here or there than in a key playoff moment. Maybe learn from that. Go back and watch the video. Okay, Hunter, you focus, you got in, but you still did this. And that's where these pitching coaches, Maldonado, Diaz, Miller, all these guys are going to come together. Brock Amante, they're all going to talk about yep. what's happening and it will help them um, basically um, help them get everything in tune. And Matthew's questioning our Abreu slams the door. We'll talk about that in the third segment because yes, he actually did that. Okay. Um, but so Hunter Brown, a bend, not break performance. I think that's excellent. Um, before, Huge. before we get on to, um, our next sponsor here in a second. Um, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the bullpen. Trevor, tell us what you thought about the bullpen today. You know, because the bullpen has been gassed. The bullpen has been really kind of overused, I think. And a, a lot has to do with the length of the starting pitchers. You know, say what you want about Hunter Brown. Yeah, he g- did give up a lot of hard hit balls. But he did, like like you and I mentioned pre-show, he did go six innings. That yep. helps. What did you see out of the relief guys the bullpen that you liked and then we'll get to a bray you at the end of the third segment absolutely so we'll, we'll go with the we'll stick with the two guys that aren't the closers here we'll start off with seth martinez in the seventh inning just one inning pitch no hits all contact outs you know he had the command i think the first what he only throw i think he threw less than 10 pitches that inning could be wrong on that but he got the first two outs fairly quickly and everything out by contact nothing too outrageous no hard hit balls there um, and then things got a little shaky right around the uh, bottom of the eighth with Hector Neris, similar to that of two games ago when he had his outing. He gave up a hit and a walk. We had runners on, or it was the leadoff double, and then he walked the next batter. Ended up getting three very quick outs after that, doing his little go down, spin a 360, going into a jump. His little celebration was <laughs> awesome. Hector Neris ended up getting the win there. Also, similar to that of Hunter Brown, very bend but don't break ask from a guy like Hector Neris, who rocking a 148 ERA and a six and two record. I'm starting looking at this guy and I'm like, hmm, we gave Rafael Montero all this money. I think that they uh I think that they mistakenly wrote the wrong name on there. So this mm. should go to Hector Neris here, uh, just because of how great he's been since last year in the postseason. Dude. He was a little wow. shaky at the end of last regular season. But then when the postseason came, he was lights out. 
he still lights out now. He might give up a walk, might give up a hard hit ball here and there, but this dude has ice in the veins. Like Jose Altuve said about his snow cone video, he wants just plain ice because he's got ice in the veins. Hector Neris has the ice in the veins, and that's why he got credited with the win tonight. Look, I love it. Um, I think, you know, Hector Neri is also one of those guys that you can use as a closer um, oh, because yeah. he, you know, he did that in in Philadelphia. Um, dude, that's an excellent observation. I mean, who would have thought like like Hector Neri's really even last year and this year combined? I, I mean, he's 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 really outperformed. He's been more consistent. Right. Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't, I don't pretend to know or understand what it what it takes to sign a player, what what the negotiations are like. You know, clearly last year's production was not typical of Montero's career up, up to that point, but he did enough to do the right things, and apparently he had a really good agent because look, whether we like it or not, he's the fifth highest paid relief pitcher. So right now, and the only one that's not a closer. Out of those right. five pitchers, yeah. That, oh, that's true. That's yep. true. You know, I didn't think about that. And what I'm wondering is, were there other suitors, and were they afraid of losing him to maybe a, maybe a division rival? I don't know. I'm Seattle, really speculating. Maybe? Yeah, could be, could be. But you know what? Look, I want to I want to talk to y'all about. Look, there's ups and downs of the baseball season, and we know that the Astros got the Rangers coming up, and we also know that the Rangers and the Astros, if you can't make it to the game, we want you to go hang out with, you know, the Locked On Astros guys. Where do we hang out? We hang out at Hooters. It's a great place to get wings, to hang out, eat, drink some beer, and just, I mean, why wouldn't you want the service of the world-famous Hooters girls? Monday through Friday, they have special. So if you're going Monday, when they play the Rangers, they got buy one, get one wings. If you're going to the Tuesday, you can't make the Tuesday game, stop by Hooters, nine ninety five, nine ninety nine burgers and fries. On Wednesday, buy one, get one wings. Thursday, $19.99 wings and Big Daddy Bundle. And Friday, $19.93 crab legs. Hooters has great service, great wings, and they have really cool events going on. The NASA location has a ditch day bus, tri bus trip Thursday, August 24th versus the Red Sox. Down in 133, the store opens an hour early. They feed you before you get on the bus. You get to hang out with the world-famous Hooters girls, and they bring you back. You don't have to drive anywhere. And then Pearland is also doing a bus trip on July 25th. That's coming up. So if you haven't signed up, you better see if there's any more seats. Call them tomorrow if you're listening to this on Monday. See if they have any tickets left for that. Go check it out. Hang out with the guys at Locked On Astros. Hang out. Make sure that you go there for their great grub, the great brew, and the wonderful beers that they have on tap. Hooters. Why? Because Hooters makes you happy. And make sure that if you cannot watch the game, and if you cannot go to Hooters, then listen to the game. The Astros play the Rangers Monday, 7, 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Watch every pitch of the Astros hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Astros. So, Trevor, before we get to Abreu slamming the door shut, we can't forget someone that also hit a home run today that lately has kind of come down to earth a little bit, but still has light tower power, it seems like. I don't know if maybe I'm misusing that phrase a little bit. But Yanner Diaz hit a no-doubter today. Yanner Diaz, um, I think it would have gone out of 29 of 30 ballparks. You said Reverse he hit the ball. The, yep. Yeah. The, the ball was a little high, you know. But no, Yanner not. Diaz being in this lineup, like how important could he be in a playoff run with being able to go yard pretty much any at-bat? Oh, man, you said light tower power, right? I mean, that's like some Manny Ramirez type of stuff right there. When I think of light tower, I think of the the, the towering shot he hit off the uh -oh. light tower. And uh, I compare him, you know, you look at him in a playoff game, you compare him to a guy like Salvador Perez, a clutch catcher that can ha that has huge power going into the playoffs in his swing. And uh, I'm telling you last night, Brett, if, if we play last night's game in Houston, it's a 4-4 tie going into the ninth inning. I'm telling you that right now, because that would have left the Crawford boxes in a hurry. would have been close to the freaking train tracks, but playing in that Coliseum, that ball was what three feet away from tying the game last night, but he definitely redeemed himself uh, today with the home run, breaking the goose egg, tying the game at one and creating a whole new ball game uh, because that offense up until the fifth inning was, you know, at one point in the top of the fourth, we were looking for a hero. We had, <laughs> A runner at second and first with nobody out somehow turned into us not scoring any runs. 
Um, I think it was a hit by Bregman and a walk from a Bray and then we just couldn't drive him home. But that was huge to break the tie, to break the goose egg, really kind of set the tone for the rest of the game. Yonder Diaz did that absolutely perfectly. And he's going to bring it from these games on. And you know what? I kind of think you could plug and play him in a couple different spots. First base, catcher. Um, should he be the primary catcher? That That's a huge controversy topic. If you go on it Twitter. Is. Oh, you man. That, you are, you're going through the algorithm there. But Yeah, um, just watch out. Watch out because watch out what you say because it, it could get you – Proverbial or figuratively canceled in some piece shadow pen. That's right. You yeah. know, um, hey, I, I just want to say, um, Herman Bueso, if I said that right, um, he says, Hello, Brett, greetings from Honduras. Hey, thank you for listening from Honduras. Hey, and we had the Your Honduran, Honduran that's on the team. That's right. Yep. Mauricio Dubon representing Honduras. He actually just recently hosted the Honduran national soccer team at Minimay Park. I thought that was really amazing. cool. Um, but, you know, today you and I were talking off camera. Look, Bly Madris, as much criticism as Dusty gets for putting him in, he contributed today. He was Pittsburgh one Pirates for three. Legend. Pittsburgh hey. Pirates legend, Bly Madris, <laughs> one for three and a strikeout. He got it. He got the hit, right? And and he, he scored a run. Without that run. run, without that run, Mauricio Dubon's lead is not – Three to two. It's a tie ball game, right? Yeah, he scored so, that run. And I'm looking at the comments right now. DJ Mike, Corey Jolk's body language is troubling lately. I think Corey Jolk's, you know, he had an 11 pitch at bat that led to a walk in the first inning. He also had a bases loaded walk in the top of the eighth, seventh or eighth to score right. Madrid. So I think his body language is better now than it was in April when he was swinging at everything. Um, he has more composure at the plate and he draws way more walks than he used to. So I think his body exactly. language is definitely getting better at the plate for sure. So in this game, we were 0 for 7 um, with runners in scoring position. I think maybe the day before we were 0 probably 6, 0 for something like that. Someone says, aren't, yeah. weren't we 0 for 18 with runners in scoring position? Hey, look. Hey, look. It felt Stoke, like that. Look, look, like we're that. Not, look, we're not. We're trying to celebrate the win here. Look, I look. Okay. Here is a concern, and we can kind of wrap up the conversation with this. I think it's a great – I think it's a good series win. I wouldn't call it a great series win. The reason why is someone in the comments highlighted it earlier. Like, the Oakland A's ERA is ridiculous. Yeah. Their, their batting average is ridiculously low. There's no reason, really, on paper, that this team shouldn't have won all these games 14-2, to 10-2, to 9-1. to You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And Sleeper runs maybe though, when, you're, when you're playing the Rangers and the Orioles and the Rays, whoever you have coming up, save the runs for when you're playing those guys. But as long and as maybe you, that's why, yeah, and maybe that's why you saw Madris, you saw Kessinger, you saw these other guys come in and contribute in a series that isn't necessarily meaningless because you're trying to catch the Rangers, but maybe a little bit lesser competition. But then again, look, Dusty Baker's going to go out there, and, and and I actually interviewed Kessinger on their off day um, when they were in Colorado, and I asked him. I was like, I was like, how do you get back in the box the next day after a big game where y'all go back and forth, y'all end up losing? And and I said one of the plays was at the end when you you threw the ball to Abreu, he missed it, it was counted as an error, that and ended up leading Stadium. to the win. Yeah. And and I said, what do you do? He said, you've got to go to the next game and you got to stay mentally focused. He said, everybody in this clubhouse expects to win every single game, no matter yes. who's out there. And he goes, that's what I do. He goes, you have to put it behind. You have to have a short memory. And he said, he said, failures and, and doing things not the best way is is a part of the game. Right. Um, and someone's just asking keep us this in yeah. mind too. keep this in mind. We're without Altuve. And Alvarez were three right. games back of the Rangers, who that fan base has been talking a lot of smack. They they're, they're over there. They in their, have been. <laughs> their home ballpark. They're they're chanting, "We want Houston," and then getting blown out sixteen to three uh, by our other sons in the Dodgers. And they were one and two. I think they came back and won today, eight to four. They're one and two since chanting, "We want Houston" in their building. So exactly, it's, it, it's a little scary. You know, when you're it out, is, it is when you're so and out. so and we'll and we'll wrap up with this. Um, T Brown asked, When is Jordan coming back? Look, my best guess is I would say Monday because he got the rest day, he looked good, he was running good. Even his first game back, I was actually there in the locker room to talk to him after his performance, and he said he didn't feel any pain, no hesitation. 
he like he wanted it. He would rather have been with the team on the road than in AAA, but he had to do that. So I believe tomorrow night you will see Jordan Alvarez. There, there is no reason to keep him out of the lineup. Like he had a rest day today. Dusty, please, for the love of everything that's holy, we need to see him in the lineup. I need to see Diaz in the lineup. Um, I, I think you you put him in DH. I think maybe you put um, you put McCormick in center. You go ahead and put Myers, or you put McCormick in left, yeah, Myers in center, because you know if Myers and McCormick are in there, Myers is going to be center field. Um, heck, you can even you can even DH Dubon. Look, I, I I just think you put a top lineup out there to beat the Rangers to pound them in the ground because we've got to. These three games are so important for us. We got to. I think we got to at, at least come out of this tied. I don't. Can we? Can we come out ahead if we're if we're three games up? I believe if we sweep them, we would get the tiebreaker. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. So let's let's take the Silver Boot series. Let's take it to the Rangers. Um, let's take advantage of their players being out, and we'll see Jordan Alvarez come up and do some heroic stuff. And hey, before we go, Trevor, before you wrap it up with your final thoughts, I want to tell everybody tomorrow night there is an advertisement on YouTube. You'll see it myself, Eric Heisman. Um, and Brad and, and Bryce Bryce Patrick of Locked On Rangers are going to be hosting this live hangout. Okay, it is Roy Oswald, Dan Wheeler, Pudge Rodriguez, Ruben Sierra, and Will Harris has now been added to the lineup. We're going to be hanging out with these pros, asking them questions. Okay, I, I've given out my five VIP passes, um, but you can sign up, and the link to sign up is on our community tab. You'll see the advertisement, the image. Please go do that and hang out. If you haven't hit the like button tonight, please hit the like button. Finish this up, Trevor. What are your final thoughts going into the Rangers series? Going into this series, look at this. You have injuries on our side. You have injuries on their side. You have a rested up Ryan Presley. You have a lineup that is overdue to explode for like eight or nine runs in a game. You have your Don coming back. We don't know much about Altuve, but you have Dubon coming off of a great game. Or, I, I mean, at least a great clutch outcome. Jeremy Pena is long overdue. Uh, Jose Abreu. I mean, when was the last time he hit a bomb into the Crawford boxes? He's overdue. The theme going into this series, a lot of these players are overdue. And it would not It would be the best time to explode on the Texas Rangers team, on that fan base that's been talking a lot of smack. We've, had, we've been injured all season long. Hopefully we get that silver boot back. I think even if the season ended right now and we were tied, we'd still have the tiebreaker. I think we have a four and three or five and three record against the Rangers this year. I could be wrong on that statement, but I got a lot of confidence because I know that our fan base is going to be in Minute Maid Park. They're going to be screaming loud for our boys. I want to see a full house for these next three games because this is a very, very, very important series going into this one. And then we got to play the Rays after that. So that's right. Do what should be tough teams coming into this, uh, coming into our stadium. But we showed that we could beat the Rangers. We showed that we could beat the Rays and shut out the Rays twice. So this, that's right. I've been seeing a lot of panicking. You know what? We didn't score a lot against Oakland, but this means that we can really unload and start throwing the Luthaz press, so to speak. There you go. Rangers. I like it. And look, T Brown says, if we win two out of three, won't we still take the tiebreaker? I believe we would win the tiebreaker. You think two, yeah. two out of three. For sure. So, all right. Well, hey, dude, um, you know, thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you all for coming in. Dude, 111 y'all, please, if you please, if you're here, if you haven't done it yet, hit the like button, okay? My name is H-Town Wheelhouse. This is your only Daily Astros podcast that's out there. We got great guest hosts like Trevor Hauer, who comes in and steps in. Eric the Man Heisman is roughing it. He's on vacation. Hey, don't hate the man. He's out there getting rested up for you guys because we're getting ready for another playoff run with the Houston Astros. So for myself, Trevor Howard, and everybody at Locked on Astros, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and check us out. We're your team every day. Go Strohs. You better not put Maldi in there, Dusty. Please play Diaz. Yes. Let's go.